Welcome back everyone, Active Mobility Online, part three of running mobility. So if we are tight in various places, if we have limited range of motion in various places, we are going to have some effects of that visible and running. It seems like a very short range of motion activity, uh, but in reality, it's not because there are certain key pieces of range of motion that we really need to focus on for running that we don't generally have. Um, so I'm going to start from the top and go down. Normally I start from the bottom and go up, so I'm going to mix it up. Thinking about the shoulder. So we spend a lot of time out here. This stuff in front gets really tight, and running asks us to bring our elbow behind the body with that shoulder not coming forward or coming up. So we really have to think about releasing some of this. There may be other things. I'm trying to hit the main pieces here that might be affecting most people's running. So warm smash stretch. Hopefully you have some time after you're running or in the third workout. So you're already warm. We want to do pec smash first. So all of this can be considered pec uh, under the clavicle, uh, right in front of the shoulder, down into the side here. All of this tissue can contribute to tightness. Of course there are other ones, but these are going to be some of the main ones. Getting some pressure on there, probably face down on the floor or uh, with a wall, I'm just going to show like this for now. Um, and maybe this is enough. If you just finished Murph a few days ago like I did, you're probably plenty plenty tight in there and don't really need a whole lot of pressure. But we want to then work on that position that we're trying to improve. In general, mobility is going to be best and most uh, effective in improving position if we actually get into that position. So think about doing that arm sprint while you have some pressure there, twisting this will engage more of the fascia as it winds up that tissue. And then just thinking about being in a good position. So if we're collapsing here, oh, we're just suffering through it. That's not really improving the position we want to be in. We're being tall through the body, having that shoulder neutral, and then reaching that elbow back is going to be great. And again, finding those tight spots by moving that ball around, putting some pressure on, uh, being in that position. These are all things that are going to help specifically improve that uh, that running technique from the, the chest bone to the clavicle out to the shoulder joint itself and then all that space in between hunt around see what you find five minutes on one side five minutes on another is a great place to start uh, and modulate that pressure to get so that you can do that so once we've smashed we want to do a little stretch pardon me uh, i like a banded shoulder extension here so i'm leaning forward to help pull my shoulder into a nice strong position i just have a bike tire on an anchor here um, and then as i lift my body up it puts my shoulder into more extension it's possible that my head is disappearing <laughs> above the frame there but you get the idea uh, trying to keep that shoulder in a nice strong position and by hinging at the hips and coming more upright or less upright i can get into more or less shoulder extension two minutes on a side and you don't have to stay in just a static stretch there you can turn that stretch on and off in that extension there's other ways you could do that you could grab on to a door frame or something behind you if you don't have a uh, band uh, you could grab onto the counter you'd be a little bit rotated differently but should all still work all right making our way down the body to the hips the thing that I would show almost anyone that will help with that hip extension, which means getting uh, the hip behind the body, that's going to help with like that lunge, etc. Getting the hip behind the body without having uh, the spine compensate in some way is going to be quad smash and couch stretch. I've shown that in other places. I think it's in the standing video mobility stuff. Quad smash on a roller or something else to get some pressure on the quads, and then couch stretch is going to be really good use of your time and is absolutely going to improve that hip extension. In addition to couch stretch and uh, quad smash and couch stretch, I want you to think about getting into hip extension close to your running position. I'm going to show you one way to do that. I'm absolutely going to disappear off the top of the frame. I'm going to call this just a standing hip extended tuck. So the idea is I'm standing, so I'm pretty close to my running form. Uh, I'm getting into hip extension and I'm going to use this. You could use a chair, you could use the edge of a couch, 
and the music counter, the higher it is, generally the more difficult this is going to be. Um, but once I get my back foot up on this object, I'm wanting to activate my glutes, activate my core, pushing down into the object and bring my spine as close to neutral as possible. I can bend my standing leg uh, to vary the height a little bit as needed. That's going to change the experience. But you want this to be fairly close to your running position. Again, this is helping that backswing, helping you keep your feet straight as that leg comes behind the body so that your next step can be set up properly and you can have that more efficient forward and back motion and avoid some wild clownery instead. So what this is going to look like, I've probably disappeared. I'm getting myself nice and forward, I'm bracing on this object. You can see I'm in fairly good standing position. I'm pushing my foot down into that object and then I'm tightening my glutes, tightening the front of my body and just getting some uh, lengthening through the hip flexor in this position. I probably want to be out a little bit to actually get that knee slightly behind the body. Same thing again, but front, I can drop down here a little bit, but I'm pushing pretty hard into that uh, object. It would be much more comfortable if this were a couch or something. And then I just turn that on and off. Squeeze the glutes, squeeze the front, tip the tailbone under, trying to get neutral, and then release. I can come lower or higher as I need. Probably spending maybe 10 activations there, getting to a place where it's a little bit challenging. You feel some lengthening through the front of the hip, 10 activations on breaths, uh, maybe lowering through that front leg throughout, and just playing around with that is going to be a great way to build some competency in that extended hip position in a position that's pretty close to running. Finally, you guessed it, calf, ankle, foot, toes. All this stuff is so interconnected. Uh, if your calves are tight, it can pull on your knee in weird ways um, through the back channel. Uh, if your shin is tight, that can pull on your knee in the front in weird ways. Um, it is all so connected. So once things are warm, smashing and scraping anywhere. And I'm just going to show you some of the, the spots that are, are sort of key. Uh, this whole front pocket of muscle, especially if you're reaching out and heel striking, or heel striking even if it's closer in, uh, or decelerating the entire body using these muscles. These are going to get tight shin splint territory, so we want to get into that. Doing some movement through the joint while the muscle is under that pressure is going to be a good way to get some intensity in there. So across this whole front pocket, all the way up, all the way down. The calf, I do not recommend doing calves on rollers because you have to like hold your whole body weight up. So. I would recommend against that. Um, I have a rolling pin here, and actually this is a great way to do it because I get to have my knee bent so that part of those big calf muscles are relaxed as I do this, and I can just go up and down and I can go side to side here. Um, I can also do some point and flex if I get in there. Um, it might be hard to get quite enough pressure with this device, um, but if you have a barbell at home, you can do that. This is a good way to get into the sides though. Um, and those, those side pockets and those deep calf muscles are gonna get into a lot of the stuff that controls the foot, uh, as well as the bigger ones that control the ankle. So just spending five minutes on the side, getting into this stuff is great. And you could go flatter and do something like that on a wine bottle or whatever you have. I'm sure I've talked about that. And other times uh, you could also use the back of a butter knife to do some scraping here. You can use this kind of like a draw knife if any of you have ever peeled logs. Um, you might do this one direction. Uh, it's a great band, but it's also something to consider when you're scraping. You just go one direction for a while and then switch. You don't want to do this to a point where it does create a lot of tissue damage. Uh, if you've never done scraping before, look up some resources. Um, it's not going to do a whole lot to your big muscles other than the fascia that sort of covers them, which might be great. Um, but once you get in around the Achilles uh, and other smaller structures, uh, it can be a really good technique to free those up. You wouldn't want to go right on the bone though, so I wouldn't recommend going right on this malleolus, but you could use like the back of this is actually a really good tool to just do some gentle sort of up and down scraping around the whole ankle in the sides of the Achilles, etc. 
if you found some places that were really gnarly, again, just gentle, one direction over that space uh, for about a minute. See how that feels. You don't want to really beat yourself up. If you were trying to make some uh, progress through scraping, you'd want to do about a minute a day and just leave it at that and see how it goes. You don't want to spend 10 minutes just yeah, going to town on this and end up uh, with some bruises or some big tissue damage. Less is more until you feel how your body reacts to it. Same thing on the bottom of the foot. Um, again, your average butter knife has a bunch of different surfaces on it. Uh, getting into the fascia here on the bottom of the foot is great. Um, again, same, same rules apply. Uh, you could do some manual manipulation of the toes, some spreading of the toes. You get some of those toe spreaders. That's going to help sort of stretch things out. If your shoes push your toes together, you want to counteract that um, doing some manipulation manual to get the bones of the foot moving properly is a great way to spend time improving your own. So once we've sort of smashed through a lot of this tissue, we want to do some stretching. Um, we want to hunt for tightness while we're stretching. So thinking about this toe flexing kneel, uh, so I can hang out here. That's putting my toes on a pretty good flex, while also putting my calf on a pretty good stretch. However, my knee is really bent, which isn't all that appropriate for running. Uh, so I want to do some lengthening of the calf with that knee closer to straight. But this is a really good way to get into my feet. And from here, I can kind of wiggle side to side, hunting out that tension. So I wouldn't want to wiggle side to side while I'm running, but doing it while we're stretching is going to load that big toe and the other toes and kind of help us to find any pockets of tightness. That side to side internal external rotation, pronate, supinate, invert, ebert, those are all cool words. Um, playing around with that may help us find pockets of tightness, and it's also just going to help uh, alleviate the mind-numbing, painful boringness of stretching. So playing around with that is good for multiple ways. This getting the, the balls of the feet uh, to be pretty well grounded in this position is a great goal. Uh, less is more probably for this, turning it on and off for a while. Excellent. And then down dog is actually a really good running stretch. So here we're able to get more into that calf with the knee sort of straight. And then I can play around with that side to side. I can play around with my foot position to get into some different stretches. So I can go pigeon toed, I can go wide feet, I can go angled, angled the other way. Um, and I can also sort of sit down one foot and push that knee in and out, sort of twisting my foot into the floor. Slightly bending the knee, slightly straightening the knee. Um, if being a down dog for a long time is a big ask for your wrist, uh, you could be up on something, you could be in more of like a plank. Um, make that part for your shoulders feel doable. You could be doing this against the wall as well. Um, that's going to help lengthen the hamstrings as well as the calves. And I just recommend that playing around with the different foot position in, out, diagonals, um, and then that sort of invert, evert. Uh, variation will also help not only to find tightness in all those little control these stabilizing things that happen in the foot and the ankle and the calf uh, but also to build some stability in those positions all right there it is your new relationship to running just in time for this nice warm weather uh, intervals make your running as strong and as intentional as all your other exercises good playlists are out there have fun